Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to speak about Botox. I'm going to share with you guys my own personal experience, share with you my knowledge and understanding of Botox, side effects and also when you should really consider having Botox and what concerns it's good for. If you'd like to watch this video, please press the subscribe button and like my video and you'll get notified of any of my new videos. So I'm going to start straight away with what is Botox. So Botox is a poison which is injected into the muscles and it stops them contracting. So the brain sends messages via the nerves which will send a message to the muscle which will contract it. So when Botox is injected into the muscle, it blocks the nerve from sending that message to the muscle, which then when you move your face, that's how you get movement. So um, there are different kind of concerns where you can have Botox. So the first one is lines and wrinkles. So if you've got expression lines on the face, which means that if you pull, if you frown or you move your face when you're talking or um, doing any expression and you get them kind of lines that come up, those are classed as expression lines. When your face is not pulling any expression and you've just got a resting face, the lines that you have there are called static lines. So Botox is more effective on expression lines and when your face is resting, if those lines are not very apparent, then Botox works best for these lines. Once you've already got quite deep wrinkles and lines, it's very hard then to get a good improvement with Botox. Once you get to a certain age and the lines are too deep, then it's very, very hard to get a good result with Botox. That may be where you may need filler or other resurfacing treatments like chemical pills, microneedling, um, lasers that will help to resurface that skin and exfoliate and get deeper down. Then once you get a really good improvement, then maybe you can have Botox um, as a preventative to stop the muscle movement. I just want to say that I'm not a trained practitioner in Botox, but I have had Botox around four times and I worked in two clinics where they did offer Botox and I watched Botox being done quite a lot and I obviously did my own research before I decided to have Botox. Somebody who's got quite prominent expression lines when they move their face um, can be frowning, can be in the middle, can be here, can be the lines in the middle, can be around the eyes here. Um, if you have Botox, what will happen is it will prevent you from aging further. So because the muscle's frozen, um, it will stop you from being able to over kind of use them muscles because the muscles are like, if you think of an elastic band and if you keep stretching the elastic band and stretching it, eventually what's going to happen is it's going to get weak and then eventually it will snap. That is like the collagen in our skin. So when you're constantly moving your face, um, you're stretching like that elastic band, you're stretching, stretching, stretching and over time it becomes weak and it will lose its um, elasticity and also collagen in the skin as we age. There are also other things like sun damage, um, diet, alcohol that affect obviously our skin and how it ages as well. So Botox is more preventative when you're using it for lines and wrinkles. I get asked a lot by clients what age do they think that they should start to have Botox. So I, I think obviously the minimum age is 18. I personally think anyone from 18 upwards can have Botox depending on the condition of their skin. So again, if you're somebody that's got a really strong um, expression and you're using them lines, I've even noticed it from girls that are 19, 20 that have quite prominent lines from expression so in my opinion those clients would be a candidate for Botox because what's going to happen is it's going to prolong the skin and the muscles moving and it will prolong them aging so they'll look younger for longer and that's what I personally think Botox should really be useful when it comes to lines and wrinkles. 
Botox can also be placed around here where you get little fine kind of lines that will really clean them up as well so it gives you a more youthful look. Botox can be injected into different areas so you can get a brow lift, it can be injected into here and it can actually raise your brows which gives you a more youthful look. It can be used in the sides here to give you that towel lift as well which is very in at the moment it's that kind of model very young looking look it can also be used if you have one brow that is a lot higher than than the other it, you can add a little bit of botox just above it and what it will do is it will actually relax the brow as well so i get clients that come in for semi-permanent makeup and when we're mapping the brows i obviously use a ruler i follow all the guidelines and i try and get them as symmetrical as possible most people always have one side of their face where their eyebrow is higher so the choice is if they don't want to have botox i try and make them as even as as possible but in some cases it's just not possible to get them completely symmetrical so them clients may be a good candidate to have botox just to lower one of the brows so it looks more symmetrical. Botox can also be used here in these muscles here. So if you're somebody that grinds your teeth or um, has a lot of tension in your face and you kind of hold it in your jaw here, what can happen is it can make these muscles look very enlarged and give you like a square like kind of masculine face. So Botox can be injected into these muscles. Again, it will freeze, it will take away the tension and it will stop you being able to kind of bite down on your back teeth. Now I have spoken to a couple of dentists that do Botox and asked about this because I've got braces at the moment and I am experiencing quite a tight jaw and they, two of them have said to me that it can cause problems with eating because obviously you're freezing the muscle here so sometimes when you're eating like when you're chewing, apparently it can cause some problems. And another um, dentist who I knew who works in hospitals say that they only prescribe that as a last resort to grinding teeth. So there are other things that um, can be recommended for grinding teeth and kind of if you're biting down on your jaw. But it's another place where Botox can be used. Botox can also be used in the underarms for excess sweating. So how that works is it gets injected into the area, it goes into the sweat glands and it stops them from being stimulated so that you don't produce excess sweat. Botox can also be used for an overactive bladder and what happens is they inject the Botox into the walls of the bladder and it stops contraction. So that stops the constant urge and it also helps with overactive bladder symptoms. Botox can also be used for muscle spasms. So if somebody's suffering with a severe kind of neck pains or they get like shaking, Botox can also be used to help relieve them symptoms. Botox can also be used for migraines and headaches. Again, it stops the nerve sending signals to the kind of muscles and it helps to relieve them symptoms. With the jaw as well, it can also be used um, because the muscles here, when you're grinding, you get kind of a big muscle. Botox can also be used to slim the jaw and give you like a more V line as well. What are the side effects to Botox? So Botox is a poison and anyone at any time in their life can become allergic to any substance. So there's always a chance you can have an allergic reaction to Botox. I personally haven't. I've had Botox four times. The only side effect that I've got is a slight headache um, for about one or two days and then it goes away. Um, you can't, obviously, when you have Botox, you get the little incisions, tiny, tiny little red marks. Um, obviously, you're recommended not to put any makeup or any product on top just to avoid the sites getting infected. And also, my aftercare was not to bend, kind of bend down and pick anything up and no hot baths or showers for 24 hours. So the aftercare is really simple and you can kind of go on with, with your day what are the difference between Botox and fillers? So I've had lip fillers once before. I tried it when it kind of first came out and everyone was kind of getting into the lips. 
and so filler is volume so volume so like on your cheeks it creates volume also in your lips it plumps out it gives you bigger lips more fuller lips um, also there's a different type of filler that can be put here where your eyes are um, which is um, for the tear ducts and also it helps with dark circles and it just gives you a bit of loss of volume which some people get under the eyes so as we age and we get older our face structure changes all the kind of holes in our face start to kind of break down and the fatty pads start to come away which is why you start to notice dark circles here loss of volume the cheeks as well start to drop also there are different quantities that can be used with Botox so there's like a treatment that's called baby Botox which is basically where they can put the tiniest amount of Botox in the areas which are forming lines and where the muscles are being used and it will literally just smooth out clean up their muscles and just prevent movement which will um, prevent any more lines and wrinkles so and that can just be the tiniest amount of Botox and again anyone from the age of 18 upwards also filler can be added around the jaw to give a more um, square like kind of model jaw which is quite in as well so that's kind of the different with fillers give you volume they also can be used in certain cases for really deep lines as well that Botox wouldn't be good for and that will just fill the line in my own personal experience with the lip fillers I tried it once and the dentist who did mine he used a complete dental block so I didn't feel anything although I'm not the best with um, anaesthetic I do get quite panicky and then when he did the actual procedure I will put a before and after picture in um, it did I just wanted it quite natural so the top lip was a lot smaller than my bottom lip and because of my underbite on my top jaw where my front teeth were slightly more back from my bottom it gave the illusion of like that like a thin top lip and a more fuller so I just wanted to try mainly filler in the top lip just to plump it out um, just to kind of see how it looks and the first couple of days you're swollen and I've got like a little scar here on my lip as well so this had a bit of tougher kind of scar tissue and then after about five days once the swelling goes down they were literally perfect I literally loved them um, and you know with the lip liner and the lipstick they made my lips look a lot bigger and quite a lot of people co um, complimented me as well the only thing I found was within six months the filler had completely gone and I had like a small little lump just inside the lip which I didn't like also with lip fillers I've seen clients come in that have gone quite big with their lips and I've seen that the skin on the lips becomes crepey so it kind of put me off um, I tried it once I did like the look of it but the upkeep of it wasn't for me so with any of these treatments when you start them I mean it's fine if you want to try something and you know if if you don't feel that it's worth the money or you know you didn't really get the result fair enough but all these treatments do have upkeep like their maintenance Botox lasts between four six eight or if you're someone that's having like baby Botox and you need the tiniest amount you may only need it once a year but they are things that once they do wear out the lines will come back or the you'll lose the volume and it is something that you have to keep up which is it can become quite addictive so again you need to think before you start this is this something that you want to do and you know really look at the pros and cons as well another thing worth mentioning about Botox for lines and wrinkles the Botox takes roughly about 10 days from when you have it first done it takes about 10 days to fully set in so with the first time that I ever had Botox done about a week afterwards I kept looking in the mirror and I was like there's no difference there's no difference there's no difference and I even asked the guy that I worked with I was like please can you put some more in put some more in and he kept saying to me Rebecca wait give it 10 days honestly wait literally day 10 I woke up and bing literally it was like 
I was like, hello, Botox. Like, literally, that's what it does. It cleaned all my lines up, um, my movement. Because when I speak, I've had Botox now, so I can't really raise my eyebrows that high. But if you look back at my other two videos, you'll see that when I speak, I really raise my eyebrows quite high. Like, I hold a lot of tension in my face. And that's the reason why I've had Botox, is because the lines will start to get, get quite prominent. And when I'm filming, I can see on the video, I can see them and I can see. Also, I had one eyebrow that was slightly higher. The last time I had Botox done, one of the brows was a bit higher and I just didn't go back and have a top up. Um, so again, you have your first session, then about 10 days the Botox will work. And then after that, you book like a top up appointment. If you're completely happy with it and you don't want any more, that's fine. But it might be a case that you might get a brow that's slightly higher or, you know, there's still a couple of lines on the side. So and also if it's somebody for the first time that's doing your face, they won't really know how much Botox to put in. So the third time, the last time that I had my Botox done, it was with someone different just because it was local and it was just more convenient. So when I went in this time, she took my before pictures. She also got me to frown and move my face and she did like little dots with a white pen just to see where she was going to inject the Botox. And then she put a little bit in because if you put too much in, you can't unfreeze the muscles, you have to wait for them to wear off. So it's better to go a little bit first and then when you come back for your top up appointment at day 10, then she kind of looked and could see where I wanted it cleaned up. I told her where I was still kind of noticing. One of my eyebrows was still, is it this one? Yeah, was still a tiny bit higher. So she injected it just above the arch just to bring it down which is fine, you can see that they look pretty symmetrical now because um, it was really annoying me. And now she's got my notes and she knows next time how much Botox to use. So I always think if you find someone that's good that you like, keep with that person because if you mix and you change to somebody else and they're putting Botox in you for the first time, they're not really gonna know how much. So then if you don't go back for your top up, you're going to think, oh, she wasn't very good, the lines are still moving, but it's because you haven't given it a chance. If you put too much Botox in, you're going to over freeze the face and you're not going to be able to move. So you can see with me, I can still move my eyebrows and I still have movement in my forehead. So I'm, I'm going to put before and after picture in, but literally I still do have quite natural movement. Um, I'm not too, I don't look too overdone, it's just cleaned up my lines and it's just made me feel a lot younger and just a lot fresher as well. But you do need to look after your skin because the Botox will clear the lines up, you'll get instant after the 10 days, you'll get like an instant improvement, a smoothness of the skin, the lines will look like barely anything there, you'll look younger, your brows will be like lifted, but if you don't look after your skin and wear SPF and cleanse your skin and exfoliate your skin, when the Botox wears off, the lines will come back. And they may even come back worse if you've been out in the sun, using sunbeds, you kind of haven't been using any skincare because obviously your skin looks fine when you've had the Botox. But when it wears off, you'll really see, you know, it because the Botox doesn't really do anything to the skin. It freezes the muscle. So that's what a lot of people need to realise. People think that Botox is a quick fix and they love it because of that. But long term, it's not going to improve your skin quality. It's not going to exfoliate your skin and it doesn't protect your skin from sun damage. Okay, so moving on to my own personal experience, I've already told you guys why I wanted to have Botox. It was because of my expression lines and holding tension in my face. I've had Botox um, four times now. This last time was my fourth time. And each time it's just been literally to smooth the lines. Um, this last time was to correct one eyebrow that was slightly higher. I'm 33 years of age, although I look quite young for my age, and when I speak to clients about Botox, most of them always go, oh my god, you don't look like you need Botox. Like I said before, I think anyone from the age of 18 above 
um, can have it, but depending on the concerns and how concerned you are as a person. If you're somebody that doesn't have strong expression lines or your skin is quite good, I don't think you need to have it. There are also other treatments like microneedling is brilliant, but you need to consider that the, the lines are being caused by expression, so by you moving your face. So again, like I said, if you're somebody that's got a really strong expression and you can see them lines quite prominent, then Botox would be, you would be a candidate, really good candidate. If the lines have already gone too far and they're too deep, then you may not get a really good result with that and you'll need to either maybe have filler or use microneedling or chemical pills. As I've said, when I went for my appointments, they've always taken before and after pictures. They've always drawn the white line so they know where to inject and they've always put a certain amount of Botox in and then 10 days afterwards you go for your top up and they show you the before and after pictures, which I think is really important as well because sometimes you don't see it yourself but when you see it in a picture you can really see it when i was going to my appointment i was still feeling there was a lot of movement than when i'd had botox before and one of my brows was still higher so she did the injections i'll put a clip of what it looks like after the injections and then i waited a full 10 days before i took my after pictures which i will put in next I followed my aftercare, I didn't put any products on or makeup on for 24 hours, I didn't have any hot baths or showers or any gym and literally just let the Botox do its thing. So you can see the before and afters, even now as well you can see I've still got some movement but it's just cleared the lines up and I'm really happy. Personally for myself, Botox will be something that I will always do. Um, I do chemical pills, I do microneedling as well, which I have seen an improvement, but I do really rate Botox. It is my kind of treatment. And so the maintenance afterwards is between four, six, eight, or 12 months, depending whenever you start to notice the Botox wearing off and the lines coming back, then you will go and have just a top up and then that will just keep it all fresh. Cost of Botox can be anything from £150 to 200 to 270 depending on how many areas that you want done. So areas can be like one area here, two areas here, three areas. It really does depend on the um, dentist. But um, yeah, it, Botox is quite affordable nowadays. You just need to really check who you're going to, make sure that it's somebody that is qualified, that does work from a CQC practice of hygiene and don't kind of go to anyone that's doing Botox parties or, you know, somebody that's just qualified because obviously you are injecting a poison into your face and you need to make sure that somebody knows what they're doing. So this is my video on Botox. I hope it's given you guys a bit more information and you know if anyone's thinking of doing Botox, the pros and cons. But if you like this video then please subscribe and like and I will see you guys in my next video.